Welcome, we're with WQIS and we're doing some water chemistry sampling today. We're here at the Rocky River. Here on the Rocky River, we're doing sampling uh, in cooperation with the Cleveland Metro Parks. Uh, they kind of wanted to see what was going on in their park system. Uh, and we have some CSOs that run through the park. So what we're doing is we're sampling downstream, just kind of see if our CSOs are impacting the, the main stem. And we'll be able to tell if there's any exceedances, you know, of heavy metals or anything else like that. Now what we're going to look for when we go to take a sample in a river is we want somewhere in the middle, somewhere with good flow, that way, you know, we get a, a good representative sample of the water chemistry of the water that's coming down uh, the stream. This is measuring uh, things like temperature, dissolved oxygen, or DO, um, and pH. Uh, what Jill's filling out here is a field sheet. It's going to record the color and the clarity of the water, and, and even what the weather is. Did it just rain? Is it sunny out? Has it been dry for a while? That way, when we go to compare the data, we have a good idea of what was going on that day when we were collecting the sample. There's about 15 minutes from the time you take the sample to the time you get it into the ice chest. It's 15 minutes before uh, some of the chemical parameters start changing. Oh, okay. So we want to start cooling down. Analytical Services has uh, given us some preservative, pre-measured preservative for this amount of sample. And we're just going to toss that in there and shake it up a little bit. And then it's on to the next site. At this site, uh, what we're doing is we are going to be taking a, a sample duplicate. That way we can compare the results and make sure our sampling methods are, are good. So you're taking two to see if anything comes up different, which would indicate you're doing something wrong? Yeah, that maybe we're mishandling them, um, that there could be a wrong with our sampling method or mm -hmm. transportation from here to the truck. Another sample that we have to do is we have to take what's called a field blank. I'm going to take this DI water. Uh, deionized water and what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer it to this bottle that Jill's holding here. Basically what this is one is going to show us is is there any contamination during travel you know from from you know sitting in the cooler uh, going to each site things like that. Once we collect all of our samples and we bring them back to EMSC first thing we're going to do is we're going to put all of our samples into the cooler. We're going to sign over a chain of custody uh, and basically it's a piece of paper saying that we know uh, where all the samples were during the sampling event. Uh, my name is Paul. I'm a wastewater analyst. We're going to be testing the rivers for E. coli growth. We have our MTEC plates here, and they are specific just for E. coli bacteria. After it's been in the incubator for a day and the bacteria grows, we're going to count it out and we'll try to get a rough estimate of how much is in each river sample. Okay, so we have one of the rivers here. You should say we put in 50 milliliters there. And as you drop it down, have less and less water sample, the E. coli growth goes down. The water. numbers refer to the amount of water that you're putting in there? Correct. Okay. We're putting in 50 milliliters here. Mm -hmm. So obviously you're going to have a lot more bacterial growth in there. Mm -hmm. Once Paul gives us the results from the uh, E. coli samples, we'll compare those results to the water quality standards. And from the number that he gives us, we can either tell if it's meeting or exceeding the water quality standards. 